What if I told you that a bus just traveled more than 6,000 kilometers across Africa without using a single drop of fuel, no diesel, no electric plug-in charging, no battery swapping stations, only pure motion, self-generated motion? In a time ruled by oil companies, power grids, and endless EV charging debates, one man quietly rewrote the rules once again. This is the little-known story of Sangolani Maxwell Chikumbuzo and the African bus that just made history. The Unbelievable Journey From the burning roads of Zimbabwe to the busy cities of East Africa, one ordinary-looking bus went on a trip that would test science, challenge politics, and shake the fossil fuel economy itself. Maxwell's self-powered bus is nothing like the regular electric vehicles people know. There are no solar panels placed on its roof, no giant battery packs hidden under the seats, no smoke, no noise, just clean, silent, and constant movement. The trip started in Harare before sunrise. Local reporters came to watch. Engineers laughed at the idea. Skeptics called it a publicity stunt. But by the tenth day, as the bus rolled into Ethiopia, the conversation had changed. People said the technology couldn't exist. At the center of Maxwell's bus is what he names the greener power machine. It is a new type of system that transforms electromagnetic waves into real movement. It works without any grid support, and does not depend on the usual storage tools like lithium-ion batteries. Critics dismissed it as fake science at first, but that noise started fading after more than a dozen African scientists and engineers examined the model and couldn't find faults in how it worked. Some even said this invention could serve as the model for transport in rural Africa, where fuel supply or charging stations are rare or totally missing. The influence spread fast and governments took notice. The news didn't stay inside Africa. Within only weeks, international media started covering it. Reuters described it as Africa's version of a moon landing in the electric vehicle world. The United Nations Energy Council issued a public request for a demonstration. Whispers began to circulate that Western oil and energy giants were already moving in, hoping to buy the patent. At the same time, several African nations, including Kenya, Zambia, and Rwanda, expressed interest in adopting the technology for their national bus systems. A Kenyan minister even declared, This changes everything. If this proves real, we are not just importing buses anymore. We are importing the future. Maxwell Chikumbuzo's own story has been far from easy. He has been labeled a dreamer, ignored by mainstream science, and even threatened by strong groups that fear his work. Still, he kept going. The 6,000-kilometer test drive wasn't only a trip across roads. It was a loud message aimed at doubters, at his home continent, and at a world desperate for change. The planet watched as Maxwell's bus finally rolled into Cairo, surrounded by crowds, reporters, and global engineers who had flown in to see it with their own eyes. It wasn't just a bus crossing the endpoint. It was a whole revolution in motion. People started asking difficult questions. If this technology really functions, why isn't it everywhere already? Who gains from keeping it hidden? And what would happen if dependence on fuel ended all of a sudden? From Dubai to Detroit, boardrooms went into emergency mode. Tech investors in Silicon Valley tried reaching out. But Maxwell stayed silent focused not on glory, not on wealth, but on freedom. With the success of the 6,000-kilometer trip, new opportunities opened across the continent. In Rwanda, tests began for 20 self-powered school buses. In Ghana, local workshops were adapting old diesel buses with the greener power system. But more than new infrastructure, something deeper was changing. Africa's way of seeing itself. No longer satisfied with buying outside innovation, Africans were starting to view their own inventors as the true leaders of tomorrow. Maxwell's bus turned into a traveling symbol, a moving lab and uh, museum, visiting nations, motivating young minds, and proving one clear truth. Invention has no borders. The ripple effect spread far beyond Africa. 
Car companies across the globe, who had invested billions into electric vehicles, suddenly realized they might be behind a quiet mind from Zimbabwe. While Tesla and BYD doubled down on lithium batteries and mega factories, Maxwell had already shifted the entire game with a bus that needed no fuel, no charging, and made no pollution. Traditional automakers scrambled to react. Some tried to discredit him, calling it a scam. Others rushed to secretly negotiate, offering massive sums for private access to his design. But it was too late. The public had seen it. The journey was documented. The results could not be denied. Attempts to suppress him grew stronger. Leaks suggested oil lobbies and certain foreign states were actively working to slow Maxwell's progress, creating legal hurdles, freezing financial support, and pressuring governments. But they miscalculated one thing, the rising wave of public support. Africans defended their own. Millions signed. Petitions. Crowdfunding poured in for greener power projects. Social media went viral with the hashtag Our Africa Drives itself. Maxwell no longer needed official approval. He had gained something more powerful, momentum. From Zimbabwe to the rest of the globe, what started as a 6,000-kilometer test had turned into a worldwide invitation. Delegations from New Zealand to Norway, from Brazil to Bangladesh, all flew to Harare, eager to see the bus, touch it, ride it, and negotiate rights. Maxwell's announcement shocked everyone. He said this is not for sale to the highest bidder. This belongs to the people, and it will serve the planet. Instead of selling it to corporations, Maxwell proposed building a pan-African transit grid a united transport system running fully on decentralized, fuel-free power. With the African Union backing and crowdfunding from regular citizens, plans were drawn to link more than 20 nations over the coming decade. No tolls, no smoke, no oil. As excitement grew, another whisper spread. Maxwell wasn't finished. His team was secretly testing a machine known as Project Libertas. It wasn't a bus or a car, but something entirely new, a hyper-vehicle built to move across Africa's toughest terrains, from deserts to forests, without charging, without fuel, without stopping. No one outside had seen it yet, but insiders claimed it could run for years without any refueling. Maxwell only left a cryptic note. We will not chase the future. We will build it right here. The unveiling came. More than 210 million people watched live. From Shanghai to Silicon Valley, eyes focused on Namibia, where Maxwell stood calmly beside a covered shape. A countdown reached zero. The sheet was pulled away. Shock, gasps, applause. Project Libertas was not just a machine. It was a mix of aerodynamics, smart intelligence, and fuel-free propulsion. A six-wheeled hypervehicle sleek like a sports car, strong like a military truck, and smarter than anything before it. It used gravitational wave control and ambient electromagnetic harvesting for power. No oil, no solar, no plug. For the first time, Africa was not just catching up. It was leading. Within months, the impact was visible across the continent. Remote villages were linked by self-powered transport. Farmers used autonomous trucks, children rode, school buses powered by Libertas technology. In Malawi, Ghana, South Sudan, and Niger, over 40 towns now had direct access to transport they never had before. Education improved. Fresh food arrived on time. Health units became mobile. Tech hubs in Rwanda and Kenya started building their own versions, adapted for local conditions. Economies grew, not through outside help, but through African invention. But not everyone celebrated. Oil companies, car industries, and energy lobbies began running quiet campaigns against Maxwell. Cyber attacks, fake news, and attempts to label the technology as fraud spread across media. But Maxwell and his network of engineers, 